We return now to Speaker Paul Ryan's decision to retire from Congress later this year and how it could shake up the Republican Party. I'm joined now by two who have their ear to the ground. That is Chris Buzzkirk. He's a radio host in Phoenix and editor of the conservative blog American Greatness. And Charlie Sykes, who hosted a conservative radio program in Wisconsin for 23 years and now is a contributing editor for the Weekly Standard. And gentlemen, welcome to both of you. Welcome back to the news hour. Let me start with you, Charles Sykes. Charlie Sykes, what's your reaction to Paul Ryan's announcement? Well, I've known uh, Paul Ryan for 20 years, which means I'm old enough to remember when he was the future of the Republican Party. So it's kind of a bittersweet moment. But he had the worst job in American <coughs> politics. He has an uncontrollable caucus and a completely undisciplined president. And uh, I think he tried to make the very, very best of it. But uh, ultimately, the, um, you know, the reality is, is that the American Republican Party right now is Donald Trump's party, not Paul Ryan's party. And the, the base was just not into many of the things that, that he wanted to do. Chris Buskirk, he tried to make the best of it. How do you see this announcement? Well, I don't know. if I, I don't drink, but if I did, I would have had champagne for breakfast this morning. I, tell you, I think it's a good day for the party. I think it's, uh, I think if anything, you know, it's a, it's a bit of both, I think, heading into the midterms. But if anything, I think it's slightly positive. I mean, this, uh, what we've seen with Paul Ryan is somebody who just really wasn't up to the job. He was sort of the boy wonder who always was full of promise but never really delivered. He was out of step with the party. He was out of step with the president and just wasn't very good at being speaker. He was never able to pass any meaningful legislation or even act on the promises about whether it be Obamacare, balancing the budget, returning the budget process to regular order. All of those things just went by the wayside. So it's, it's good. I think we get new blood in there. And uh, that's, uh, that's cause for hope. Charlie Sykes, how do you see Paul Ryan's legacy? Well, I, I, I think that... Uh... I think that our fellow guest was drinking Kool-Aid rather than champagne because the reality is is that um, Paul, Paul Ryan actually did get some major pieces of legislation through. But the, 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 reality, the reality is that there were fundamental differences between, in terms of character and personality, between Paul Ryan and Donald Trump in, in terms of, of you know, their approach to decency, inclusiveness, language, um, on free trade, on entitlements, on immigration, all of those things. And unfortunately, and I, I think it is unfortunate, that Paul Ryan, rather than standing up against the, uh, the blood and soil nativism and uh, nationalism of, of Donald Trump, um, that, that, he, that he rolled over. And, and in the end, it was an impossible job. It's impossible working with somebody who has no fixed principles, whose uh, uh, knowledge and interest in policy is, uh, is almost non-existent. So these guys were really opposites. And I guess what's really unfortunate is that people do not understand this alternative path the Republican Party could have taken at one point. But it is very much Donald Trump's party and, of course, uh, we'll see what the implications of that are now in the, in the midterm elections. Well, what about that, Chris Buskirk? I mean, whichever way you see what happened with Paul Ryan, where does this leave the Republican Party? Well, I, I want to just I want to address one thing Charlie said. I mean, there is not an ounce of blood and soil nativism in Donald Trump or or in the or in the rest of the party, and that's just a scandalous and a scurrilous accusation which we can't let stand. In terms of where this leaves the party, though, I think this uh, I, I think what we're doing here is we're cutting off a uh, we're, we're cutting off a a, uh, a group of leaders now, whether it be uh, Paul Ryan or we look back at Denny Hassert, John Boehner. These are leaders who just never delivered on the promises that they made to their voters. And it's time for it's time to turn the page. Donald Trump has been uh, both a symptom of the political times that we live in, but also a catalyst for the American right to undergo an intellectual. Uh, reformation that I think can lead to a political restoration. I think this is part of that restoration. And Charlie Sykes, I gather you see it differently. Well, I see it very, very differently. And, 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 I, and I don't think that, that Donald Trump is leading, leading an, an intellectual restoration. Look, you know, here, here is a man who is a, a serial liar um, who has ruled and uh, governed with bullying and uh, a vindictive approach to, uh, to, to his critics. Uh, he is, his effect on the political process and of the culture, I think, is going to be long-lasting in terms of the coarsening of all of this. And I would caution Republicans in celebrating cutting off people like Paul Ryan, uh, because politics ought to be about addition rather than subtraction. Well, again, whichever way you see this, uh, Chris Buzzkirk, what does this mean for the party in this fall's elections? Republicans are facing an uphill climb. 
Democrats seem to be energized. What do you see? Yeah, so I, two things, and it's really a little hard to see seven months in the future, as you know, but I guess the, here's the good and the bad. I mean, the good on the one hand is that what would, candidates will not see, them say, see themselves torn between a president who wants to go one way and a uh, Speaker of the House who wants to go another way. So there's one clear message coming out of the party. I think that's positive, and the candidates can make of that what they may. You know, all these things wind up being local in the, in the House races. So that's on the positive side. On the negative side, though, Paul Ryan leaves, uh, leaves the House conference leaderless. And going into a tough uh, midterm, you know, we need all the oars in the water pulling in the same direction. So it's, that's, that's the tough part. That's the challenge, is that Republicans are going to have to come together, I think, under the leadership of the president uh, in order to win these House races. Charlie Sykes? Well, this will be a referendum on Donald Trump, and I think that the prospects for the Republican Party just got a little bit uh, darker. Um, I was a little bit surprised that Paul Ryan pulled the pin this early because it is clearly going to uh, embolden Democrats. It's going to add to that narrative of a blue wave, and I think it's going to be demoralizing for a lot of Republicans when they realize that their electoral fate is tied up with one of the most erratic and unpredictable political figures in American history, Donald Trump. But I'm figuring that that uh, Paul Ryan is fe feeling somewhat liberated that he's not going to have to go through this long slog of having to deal with and rationalize or, 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 or you know, a answer for Donald Trump's tweets and perhaps his, his attack on the rule of law. I mean, imagine what it would be like to be the Speaker of the House of Representatives in an election year uh, <laughs> if, in fact, the president were to fire the special prosecutor or members of the Department of Justice. So maybe now we will see a Paul Ryan who is willing to be more independent and perhaps more critical of, of, of the president when he's felt that he needed to bite his tongue, look the other way, um, and try to con conciliate uh, the, uh, the, uh, the president. But Chris Buskirk, uh, getting back to your point about the president, uh, you're saying that the, with, if the president becomes the coalescing force for Republicans, that's a good thing. That helps them this November? I think the party needs to speak with one voice. You know, I believe in conviction politics. The party, the party has a certain set of uh, policy prescriptions that the president has enunciated, and the and the party needs to go forward under one banner, and then let the people, let the voters decide what they what they will. But let's at least have a let's ha at least have a very clear statement of what the Republican Party wants to accomplish, and then uh, let's have an election. Well, we've got months for it to unfold, and we're all on the edge of our seats. Chris Buzzkirk. Charlie Sykes, thank you both. Thanks.